Hi. And in this video, we're going to look at ellipses. Um, and we're going to look at using ellipses to draw uh, cylinder shapes. Um, so we'll look at um, the anatomy of an ellipse, how you can, what the important parts of an ellipse are, and how to use an ellipse to draw different kinds of cylinder shapes. Um, so basically what we have, if I take, um, if I draw a circle, and I divide it this way, then we've got, obviously, these two lines are the same length. Um, if I put this circle in perspective on a flat plane, um, what happens is these lines change length. So we can still divide this symmetrically. So that's a symmetrical division. Um, but then these lines will get two different names. So this we call the minor axis and this long one we call the major axis. Um, it's important to remember those names because we're going to use them in our drawings. Um, the basic rule is that the um, major axis is perpendicular, is 90 degrees um, to the um, rotational axis of any cylinder. So if I want to draw a cylinder standing on a horizontal plane, I would start by you know, drawing a, an ellipse and I would find the middle, which is there. Um, and then I would um, draw another line here, which is 90 degrees to it. I could draw some sides. And then I would want to control the direction of this. So this is 90 degrees, and that will make it stand on a flat surface. So this is 90 degrees here. This is vertical. This is horizontal. Um, the next thing I need to control is the length of the minor axis. The length of the minor axis gets shorter, so your um, ellipse gets less round the, um, the closer it gets to the horizon. So when you're looking down on something, the ellipse is going to be less round on the top than on the bottom because if the horizon's here, this is closer to the horizon. If I continue these lines up, I would need to, if I wanted to draw it, they would get flatter and flatter till they get to the horizon, and here they would be getting rounder and rounder. And if this was going down further, here we would be getting even rounder still. Um, okay, so in order to practice this, it's a nice exercise. It's basically just to um, draw a rotational axis, draw a line, draw a base, um, and then try drawing ellipses going up towards the horizon with in proportion less gradually less round. Um, once you've done that you can connect your edges and voila you've got a shape. Um, that's standing ellipse. So it's um, 90 degrees to that. Now, what happens when I want to draw something lying down, like a pen or something on the ground? Well, I also draw a rotational axis. I also draw a line that's 90 degrees to that, and that will be my ma the major axis of my ellipse. Um, and then around that axis, I'm going to draw my ellipse. Um, I'm going to make sure the lines on the side converge. And I'm going to draw an ellipse on the back of this cylinder, which fits in here, but it's actually a little bit rounder than the one at the front. So it's a little bit rounder. Um, so practice drawing standing and lying cylinders 
um, with ellipsis. Um, there are a few more tricky things to drawing um, the lying down cylinders. Um, and one of those is basically it's got to do with the angle. So if I'm going to draw it at an angle that's almost horizontal, the ellipses are going to be, you know, we're looking more at the side of it, they'll be smaller. If I'm looking straight into an ellipse, so straight in, it's going to be round. A little bit from above, it's going to flatten out a bit. Um, and everything in between is related to that idea. So um, if I draw an ellipse, a, a cylinder here, it's going to be with a steep angle, it's going to be rounder. Okay, so try just filling a few pages up with different kinds of um, standing and lying down. Um, cylinder shapes and um, check your perspective. Um, okay, we'll leave it at that and see how you got with it.